on Facebook. Oh, you're JJ. I am. <laughs> I know. I know. You're awesome. Okay, this, this girl's amazing. The guy's so lucky. So, um, <laughs> long story, yesterday was taking a blowjob day. This girl wrote on my Facebook. Um, she's like, oh man, you had me with baby tigers. If you saw the video, it's really funny. I think it's really funny. Anyway, and, uh, and she's like, finally, we're going to buy a river. So, awesome. Okay, so beyond that, we don't really know each other, right? Which is important. So, so you have no idea about the six qualities that I'm about to talk about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to state them, and I just want you to, I don't care what order they're in, I just want you to see if these are up there for you, if these are like some of the higher qualities, okay? So we have a real girl here who, with the exception of the Facebook thing, like, so, so I've, have I prepped you in the audience and told you to say anything? You have not. Good, there we go. So unless you think she's fucking a liar, at which point you can tell it to her face, this is probably going to be real. So what do we think the six qualities are? So how about somebody starts guessing? Number one, most important thing. Confidence. Right. He says confidence is the most important thing. <coughs> I don't. It's not confidence. Humor. Humor? Humor's up there. I reckon it's higher than confidence this girl. You don't have to say anything just yet, but there's one that's number one. Number one, highest thing, you haven't said it yet. Intelligence? Nope. Passion. P-waste passion. passion? Not passion. Caring. What? Caring. Nope. Purpose. <laughs> nope, not protection. Purpose? I thought you said herpes. <laughs> <laughs> not purpose. Number one, most attractive thing. Ready? Nice hair. <laughs> Cleanliness. What? Huh. If he is not clean. If he's not clean, it's a big turn off. It's a big turn off, right? Okay. So it's the thing he has to have. Must. See that? Number one, cleanliness. No one in the room thinks of it. No one. No one at all is like that. That right there, that's number one. And yet, I go to P-Way conventions all the time, sit next to sweaty, oh. stinking guys who don't do their hair, who, who haven't like cleaned their shirts in days. You know what I mean? Number one, cleanliness. Ding. It's so important, she's like, that's not even a thing. Until I say, well, we'll get rid of it. No, it has to be there. That's number one by default. It, that's assumed. In her head, that's, that's number one. Humor. Humor, do you agree it's up there? Yes. There we go. Humor is up there. Humor is huge. Here's why humor is huge. Humor is connected to sex. That doesn't mean you should laugh when you're having sex. Here's why. It all comes down to monkeys. Monkeys know who their other friends are in the monkey group because of one act. How do the monkeys know who else is in the monkey group? You see, you see monkeys doing this all the time. Probably never thought about it. Think about it. What do monkeys do? Yes, they pick lice. No, dude, dude, that is the most important thing. They groom each other. This is so important. Monkeys groom each other. Only groom other people in the group. That's how they know who's there. The theory is this. You've got a group of 12 monkeys, and a tiger turns up. If, if Bob has picked out your lice, like first thing in the morning, and you see... No, let's do it this way. If, if, if you've picked out Bob's lice in the morning, and a tiger is turning up to eat Bob, you'll say, Bob, there's a freaking tiger coming. Watch out. Why? Because he's got to get your lice later on. <laughs> Bob owes you. Yeah, like, Bob, you ain't going to die. you got to fix my lice later, right? <laughs> it's, it's actually really important. Now, there's such a thing called a freeloader, and it's a monkey who will kind of like join the group and doesn't really do any work, doesn't really do anything. That monkey is really dangerous. What does that monkey do when a tiger turns up? Runs. He, he quietly goes to the other side of the group. He's like, fuck Bob and Jim. Like, you know, like, guys. Like, that's what he does. So that's why, you ever notice like you've got a friend who goes out to a bar and never buys drinks, and then you just don't, no one really likes that friend anymore? He's a freeloader. It's the same thing. So what happens is we identify people in a group based on whether they're freeloaders or whether they add something to the group. Trust me, this is going somewhere. When monkeys groom each other, when they like preen each other and clean each other, it releases endorphins. Now, human beings grew to massive uh, populations, right? We had thousands of millions of people in a group. You can't go around and groom everyone in the group. It, it can't be done. So we needed to develop something that was not grooming to identify freeloaders, to spot the people that were not going to warn us when a tiger's coming. What did we develop? This is, a, this is like one of the number one theories for why we have this skill. Language? Language. We develop language as a means to groom multiple people at once. And the biggest thing that we do with language is gossip. We talk about other people, which enables our reach to go further. So if me and you talk about everyone else in this room, we can discuss who the freeloaders are. It's much more effective than grooming each other. And they think this is, this is a very good reason why, uh, why language may have developed. It's, like, it's up there as like one of the top. 
I don't care about that. I care about one thing, and that is grooming someone releases the same endorphins that are released when you speak, which releases the same endorphins as when you laugh, which releases the same endorphins as when you have sex. In fact, it goes conversation, laughter, sex. The reason girls like people that make them laugh is because it releases the chemical that makes them want to have sex. And these two things, on a chemical basis, are connected in her head. She doesn't know it. She doesn't think, people that laugh, I want to have sex with. That's not what happens. She just thinks, people that laugh make me feel good. And I really like being around people that make me laugh. So I will give them a chance to talk to me. What she's saying is, I will give them a chance to potentially have sex with me. That's why humans love that. There we go, cool. See, she's like, yeah, I knew that. Good. <laughs> so, humor, it's up there. Come on, four more qualities. Now, some of you guys may have mentioned them because we were dealing with what are the top ones. So, let's go through. What are the other four qualities? Let's try to find them. Confidence. Confidence is there, but it's not actually that important. There are some girls that really need it. It is unattractive to be doubtful. But being confident isn't actually that important. Being doubtful is really damaging. Right? So, so it's kind of like there, and it, it really comes down to this. Like, if you define, it, do you guys, how do you guys define confidence? Who's, who's got like a definition of confidence? Fearlessness? <clears throat> yeah, that's, that's actually arrogance. Girls don't really like that, believe it or not. That's not, that's not as attractive as you think. Um, just but, comfortable in your own skin? Comfortable in your own skin, yeah, that, that's a pretty good one. Like, I define confidence as one thing. Confidence comes, for me, as experience. The more you do it, the more comfortable you are doing it, the comfortable in your skin thing. So, confidence is about repetition, doing something over and over again, getting used to it, you know? First time you drive a car, you're shit scared, you do it a thousand times, you become confident. So, for me, confidence is about doing the same thing over and over again until you get good at it. So, yeah, it's attractive, but it's not actually that magical thing that people can't get, it's a really easy thing. And there are actually things on the list that are probably higher. Different girls have different things, but there are other things that are, that are higher. Oh, I know one for sure. Uh, Pre-selection. Pre-selection is definitely up there. One of the qualities specifically is being a leader. So it's not just that other people are attracted to you, it's that you're like the top of that pole. And you know, we can look at Brad Pitt, um, uh, Barack Obama, you can pick like people that are at the top of their field, and women will naturally gravitate towards those people because they're pre-selected by thousands of people, millions of people, and you can have it on a smaller scale. But yeah, pre-selection or, or being a leader is like a very attractive quality. You know, a guy who's got five women around him is leading women. Like so, so whichever way you look at it, pre-selection, yeah, being a leader is one of them. So being a leader. So we've got cleanliness, quick, quick question on that. humor. Yeah, those those are two different items of mysteries for items of attraction, but you, you consider them the same. So, oh, he says leader of men, pre-selection by women and leader of men. So That's again, this is why I'm trying to get you to just remove uh, concepts and pick up. Mm -hmm. I don't see why, because there's a psychologist by the name of Jackson, which is kind of the study that we're going through right now, and he just asked women straight up to identify all the qualities in a man that they're attracted to, mm -hmm. and he grouped them in four different categories, and one of the categories was leader. Um, if you think of it like this, if a man is surrounded by five women, and he's pre-selected by them, what do you think other men will do with that man? Befriend him. Befriend him, right? He's naturally a leader of men. If he's got women around him who are pre-selected, he's already a leader of men. Other men are going to come up and say, how did you do that, how did you do that? Or they're going to try and confront him, right? Which is that the other side of it. But most men are going to be like, wow, I want to hang out with you, I want access to these women. So he's already kind of a leader of men, right? If you flip it around the other way, if the guy is a leader of men, when women see that, they're going to become attracted to him and give him pre-selection. You see what I'm saying? So, could you divide it up? Sure. I'm not saying you can't. I'm just saying I've never really seen them separated. I've never really seen a guy who's surrounded by men who listen to everything he says that doesn't have women. And I've never seen a guy who's surrounded by women that doesn't have men that want to follow him. See what I mean? Like, so does one cause the other? Are they separate things? Who cares? Leader is good. I think pre-selection is connected to it. So what else? What do we have here? Other qualities that are like attractive. What do you think? Having solid eye contact. <laughs> yeah, again, like, but, okay, so watch this. Let's, 
Let's look at that example just for a second. JJ, I'm totally going to pick on you because you're here. Okay, ready? Distracted. <laughs> 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 <Yeah. laughs> it's solid though, right? Pretty solid. It's, it's the shit. Right? Yeah, see? Not actually that attractive. Can be, not actually. Whereas, there's not many scenarios where if I'm a leader of men, the women aren't going to be like, that's kind of cool. You know, even if I was like the king of the nerds, it's still the coolest nerd in the room. You know what I mean? Like, whereas, eye contact's not as big as, it's good, but it's not, it's not that big. And actually, most people don't keep solid eye contact, they do look away, and that's a natural part of it. Um, so, whereas, not looking at somebody, that's kind of really weird. Um, <laughs> I would, I would say one, one of the big things I think a lot of guys miss is uh, being spontaneous, being fun, being, is that? Definitely. Yeah, there you go. So, um, I, we, in, in the study by Jackson, wrote it down as being a bad boy, being somebody who's just willing to take risks, do things that are a little bit different. Um, and that's because most people are bored of their life, life is boring, so you do something fun, they're attracted to that. So yeah, that's a, another quality. Um, somebody said something earlier, which is like protector. Provider is cool. Provider is like an attractive quality. Not that you have to be, but pouncing off the girl isn't good, right? If you've got a guy that every day is like, oh, honey, can you pay for this? Like, yeah, not cool. But being a provider, being able to pay for your own shit and look after her is cool. But again, you don't want to just be looking after her. If you're just looking after her, that's not so cool and she can start using that. So there's like a balance to it. Um, and then the last quality that guys always forget, especially in this industry, is being a nice guy. Caring, thinking, you know, how was your day? How you See, look at that, big smile. Yeah, like, they, want, they want you to give a fuck. They want you to care. And so a lot of guys, when they have a problem in pickup, when, when I spoke earlier about like the damage that's been done or the blockage, the blockage is probably one of these things that's stopping them from doing it. They're missing that, you know? They're not being a nice guy. They're not being a leader. They're not being spontaneous. They're not being whatever it is that they're missing. Yeah, you, you, yeah go for it. Would you consider that the nice guy is maybe just a subcategory of being emotive? and expressive yeah because I mean 100%. I think it's equally important if you have a disagreement with the girl that you're with to be you know expressive of your negative emotions too because otherwise you're you know concealing something that could e easily be resolved no I 100% I, I agree yeah like I, I think you know you can put you can put it down as like as empathy it, it's thinking about the other person and this is what I was saying like we go back to my student at the beginning the one that was like oh do I have to use game or you know can I just say whatever I want well, it depends. Is whatever you're going to say going to be selfish and rude, or are you actually going to are you going to think about it? Are you going to show that you care about the other person? But on the flip side of it, are you going to be if you if, are you just going to pretend that whatever she says is what you think as well, just because you're trying to sleep with her, right? It's that balance. And so the key to becoming attractive is to really find this: being fun, um, being clean, being spontaneous, caring about the other person, you know, emoting being a leader and being self-sufficient. These are the, the would, you, would you say the? 100%. There we go. So, so these are the things that, that are the most important thing. So you've got guys that like learn techniques, and they're like, I'm gonna tell this girl this story about this time that I saved a paraplegic from drowning when he tripped up by a pool, or whatever, and it's like some made up story. Or did you see that fight outside? This girl's tip came out because I wanna talk about sex. No, why don't you just, why don't you actually just talk about the shit that's going on in your life and really relate it to the other person. You know, really, rather than telling a story about a time you're spontaneous, just be spontaneous. And if the girl's like, oh, you know what, that's not really me, then just know that that girl is probably not into that kind of thing. But if, you really, if you're not just saying, let's be spontaneous, because I read it in a forum, and it said I should be spontaneous, that's a problem. But if you are genuinely being spontaneous, because there's a really cool thing that you want to do instantly, and she doesn't want to go, fuck that girl, that girl's not for you. Be spontaneous about stuff you really want to do and be excited about it and invite 10 girls to come and do that thing and watch as like five or six of them flake and four of them say they'll go and only two of them will turn up and one of them will actually turn up and be hot and that's your girl and everything's done and you just remove nine girls. You didn't get rejected by 90% of the women, you filtered out 90% of the girls that weren't right for you and you found the one that was right and everything's great and now you've got exactly what you want. That's so what I love about guys. Guys are just like, oh, there's plenty of other women out there but you're fixated on every single one. If you genuinely mean that, then it doesn't matter how many times you get rejected or that you move away from these other women, right? Because you're just going after this specific thing. You may not know exactly what it is yet, but you know roughly where she is. You know, you know that she's a Hispanic Asian girl that's into you know, casual sex. 
You know that's what it is, so start finding it. Start finding it. And when you get there, you know what you may find? You're wrong. You may find, actually, that's not what you want anymore, and that's totally okay. We'll take it back and we'll go, we'll go the other way. You know, I'll find something different. So, anyone else? Anyone else knows kind of what they want? Go for it. I actually have a question or something else. Yeah, go for it. Ask a question. Um, you talked one time about subcommunications and microexpressions. Yeah. Can you go into it? Uh... Yeah, so again, like, and, and, uh, to, keep it on, to keep it on topic, but to, to touch on it as well, microexpressions uh, is, is a thing that became completely fascinating for a while, which is the uh, FACS, or it's um, uh, Ekman's um, theory of how to spot an expression within the tiniest milliseconds. It's like 0.3 of a millisecond or something. What you'll do is you'll flash an expression, and you'll, get a, you'll just feel it. You can't see it. Your eye can't respond that quick. So you have to feel the expression and then you can state this was the feeling. And you, humans can get really accurate. You can get like almost 90 to 100% accuracy. And it just shows that we can be very emotive. We can really feel these connections and feel these other emotions from people very fast. Um, and I was explaining that when you're in conversation with somebody, you could use this to know whether what you were saying they were agreeing with or not. Now to talk about this, you could just use it to very rapidly identify whether this is the right kind of person you should be speaking to or not. Or whether they should be a friend or a girlfriend, like right off the bat. If you bring up a topic that you think that they will or won't like, um, and then you see their reaction to it, you can then instantly just change it. But you should only go and learn micro, you shouldn't think, that's a great thing, I should learn it. You should only go and learn micro expressions if you genuinely enjoy the concept of micro expressions and want to learn it and then want to add that to your life. If that doesn't interest you, you shouldn't learn it to pick up. It won't, it won't aid you. It's just if you're really fascinated about microexpressions and you feel you could use it in other ways, you should go and learn it, and you'll find that it benefits you to pick up. But if it doesn't, then fuck it. And that's, that's a very big thing that I kind of want to get you guys to start thinking about. Like, you know, what should, what should you just ignore? Um, I've got a thing, I don't know if you guys have seen on the cast and there's a banner at the top. It's like the one thing you want to learn in this forum. Have you guys seen that? I put it up there. If you haven't seen it, it's my banner. I put it up there because I'm running a program in Los Angeles, and I've, I've got this program, you know, coming up soon. And the whole point, the one thing you want to learn on the forum, is the one problem that you have that is yours. It's unique to you, and everybody has like their own unique problem. And I found the key to it is to spot what that individual problem is, help it. And to get to this point, it's very rarely learn micro expressions. Yeah, it's very rarely learn this really cool thing that I've spotted. It's more often than not something really simple. And it's just one little tweak that once you change it, everything in your life will change. I, I'm, I'm quite famous amongst my friends for being the guy that helps really high level P-ways. Like, um, I, I can never name names because it's rude. Um, so I, I won't do it, but I've trained a lot of instructors out in the world. Like uh, there was, uh, Nate was explaining at the very beginning, like I've worked for a lot of different companies. And when I've left, most of the instructors at the company, I was the one that trained them. So I'm still the guy they come to, to for help. I'm still the guy that they'll phone up and I'll be hanging out with, I mean, I was, in a, I was in a house in the hills probably about four weeks ago now and there were like 10 high level P-Ways filming a product because they were filming a, a, like a conglomerate combination product or whatever it is. And I was there and I got pulled into a back room by three guys and they're like, hey, teach your Romeo and Juliet thing, teach that. And I'm like, really? And they're like, yeah, teach that. And so I teach it and you guys have never heard of it, right? No. Not one of you knows what I'm talking about. That's because it's stuff that only instructors talk about. And we keep a whole bunch of stuff that we only teach each other because if it goes on a forum, it would be destroyed, diluted, ruined, and everyone would say how crap it is. And then all, everybody would be doing it, and it would be useless. But there are these like really high-level techniques, but they don't actually help you get good. They help you achieve a thing. You, know? you, you use Romeo and Juliet when you want to achieve a thing. You, you use, there's this thing called the five questions, and it's not... I know what you're thinking, it's not that one. It's not the Neil Strauss routine, it's something else. Um, and, uh, and, and so we, we use that book to achieve a specific thing. And the average student, if he learns that, and he goes out and does it over and over again, it stops any of us using it, and now it won't achieve that thing anymore because it's, you're just using a pickup technique. Whereas when you keep it really tight knit, it's specifically tailored to doing that specific thing, you can use it. So most of you guys, to get good, you really just have to work out what's stopping you right now. Like, what is the one thing that's holding you back? And I promise you, most of you guys are like, I don't approach enough. Ah, that's not it. That, that's not the thing. Like, sure, you have to approach, 
but it, you do not have to stand out in a mall and just go up and approach a thousand people over and over again. Like you can really tailor it and do something specific. But that doesn't work on a boot camp, right? You can't you can't come aboard a boot camp and at that boot camp go to a video game convention. You know that that doesn't work. So so what I've done is like the, the program I've created now is modular. So when you come aboard the program, like we've got a really cheap ticket that's just solve what problem it is and go away and do it yourself. And if you want a coach, then you can pay extra and have a coach come and help you. Or if you want the whole package and you want to learn everything, like how to pick up strips or have it, then we have like a VIP thing where you can come and do the entire program and you can do that. And that way we don't force a whole bunch of people through this entire program. And they're like, half of that was bullshit, I didn't need it. And at the same time, there are some people that just come on board, spend a very little amount of money, like 500 bucks. Like for a boot camp, 500 bucks is like nothing. But they've solved that one, the one thing that they needed, now they can go away and they've got an action plan on how to do it. Um, and so that's what we're that's what we're focusing on now, which which I love, you know, and I really enjoy it. Um, so in a second, actually, um, I'm I'm not going to sell you guys anything because I think that kind of sucks. Um, but I obviously I we've got the bootcamp coming next weekend. I'd love some of you guys to come board it. Are we getting free stuff? Is that what you're saying? So no, actually, um, <laughs> yes, in in many ways. What I was going to yeah. do is after this, I was going to go and get some food, and I was going to say any of you guys that want to come and join me, um, I would love to sit down. For anyone who's interested in potentially just learning more about the program, I'm not saying you have to sign up for it, but if you want to come down, join me for a meal. Um, I'll do two things. One, I'll teach one of those techniques that I normally don't teach publicly, one of the private ones, with the understanding that you don't put it on a forum. That's the deal. Like, and I can't hold you to that. I'm just, I, I will promise you you've never heard it before. It, it, I will promise you that. This is a technique you've never heard before. I'll tell you where to apply it. But the deal is, one, you don't just go and use it on every single girl. You use it like an instructor would, which is in a very specific situation. I have one of these techniques, the te technique I'm going to teach you, I've probably only used it twice in my entire pickup career. And it's, it's had a 100% success rate for me both times. But it's 100% success because no one else has ruined it. And I know when to use it, I'm using it right. So I'll tell you how to use it and when to use it, just so you can hear a really cool technique. Like, I'm not saying it's going to change the game, it won't. But just so you can hear something that normally we reserve for like, high level instructors and the kind of stuff they trade. So that would be my offer to you and that you will learn completely free commentary for them. If someone wants to pick up my tab at dinner, I won't say no to free meal, but I won't hold any of you guys to that. Um, but and in return, I'll talk to you about the bootcamp and any of you guys that are interested, I'll bring my iPad and I'll sign you up straight away. Like I said, the, the price start is 500 bucks for the entry level. At that, we will work out what your sticking points are, like all of them, and you'll get a solid tip on how to remove them. Not what do I learn to fix them, but just how to take them out. Just get rid of them and then you can just go and everything will be great and it will just work for you. Uh, you'll have to work at it, it's not really, but you know, within a month, two months, everything will be okay, and you'll, you'll, you'll have game. Um, or, if you want to do the whole VIP thing, then we'll take you into high-end nightclubs, um, we'll take you to strip clubs, we'll show you how to pick up strippers, we'll show you all that kind of stuff. So it's up to you what level you want to go. Um, you know, the reason we charge more for the high-end stuff is because it takes more hours, and we have more work to do, and that's a lot harder. Um, so I hope you guys get that. Yeah? Is there maybe a discount if we pick your lice? Right? <laughs> yeah, you sit there and pick my lice, sure. Um, <laughs> Thankfully, no, it should be. Um, so yeah, so so any of you guys that want to come with me for dinner afterwards, um, I think I know. Unless someone's got a really good suggestion, of somewhere really close. My favorite place to go is Ye Old King's Head on Santa Monica because it's an English pub and I get to eat English food. So I think that's where I'm going to go. So I, you know, I would love all you guys to come and join me. Like, to come and join me is completely free. You just got to buy your own food. And if someone wants to pick up my tab, I'm going to say it again because I love free now. But whatever. Um, come down there and eat English food and see that we really do have really good cuisine. I promise it's good. It's not bad like everyone thinks it is. Um, does anyone have any more questions um, about anything? Before uh, I have one, actually. Um, go for it. I didn't quite agree. I mean, and this is no, go for, it. for me, right? Yeah. Not necessarily for everyone, right? Exactly. But you said that the main reason why you should, you should feel uh, approaching anxiety is mostly because we are supposed to like fear strangers, right? Yeah. In my case, Funny enough, it's not like that, right? Okay, it's, it's mostly like, and, I, and this is by the way something that I've seen a lot of guys struggle with, sure. right? Which is, you don't fear the girl necessarily, right? There's some something like innate and internal that, that makes me fear, you know, the environment. Yeah. You know so, what I mean? No, that is not that person. Right. That's that is stranger anxiety. Okay. Because what's happening is, you can't. You're not scared of her. Yeah. You're scared of something happening and you don't know what it is. Sure. Okay. That. That fear of the unknown, that's right. Look, I, I hate to say it, that's why racism exists. Because we don't know 
we don't know that person because they're different. I agree completely. So, and, and, and it's, it's that it's same trait. trait. It's the same trait. Correct. It's like, the fuck is this? This person's different. Like, mm. this is scary. Something could happen. What could happen? I don't know, but it could be. That's stranger anxiety. Right. Yeah, and that's what we have. We have that fear in us. Right. And a part of being really, if you want to become super attractive and you want to get that guy that can, can approach anyone, you have to kill that. And a big part of killing that is truly learning to accept everyone. Like, everyone. Okay. And that, that's another, that's a, but, but we're getting into a whole other skill set. Yeah, like, you know, and, right. but yeah. But stranger anxiety is tough, because, like, I, I'll give it to you like this. Stranger anxiety is what is stopping you getting killed when you walk through downtown LA late at night. <laughs> if true. you kill stranger anxiety, your chance of living decreases in certain situations. Right. So my stranger anxiety is pretty much zero. Like I've, I've spent a long time killing it, it's kind of gone. Which means that when I walk through downtown LA, if one of my friends from LA is with me, and you know, one of the, you know, the, the walking dead extras that are there, like they, they'll come up to him and they'll start talking to him, and he's just like, ignores him and just keeps going. I start talking to him. Because my stranger anxiety is gone, I don't want to be rude, so I'm like, oh yeah, it's fine. And then they start coming up to me, and then they'll start being a little bit more aggressive because right. they're getting some leeway with me. Right. And I know from where I grew up, I grew up in like the wrong side of the tracks in London, I know you're not supposed to engage them in any way, and that's what makes them go away because they're getting compliance. And I've given them the compliance because I'm not scared. But because I'm not scared, I'm actually creating a much more dangerous situation, mm. and I shouldn't do that. Right. But I also have got out of that in the past, so, I'm actually releasing a video soon about fear and what causes it and where it comes from um, and why we have it. And so, because in the past I have confronted danger and got out of it okay, I have this sense that if danger comes up to me, I can confront it and everything will be okay. Right. So, I, I, so, I lived in Africa for two years, and you guys know that, but I lived in Africa for two years. Um, and when I, when I was there, I loved it, it was great. I recently, I'd say recently, two years ago, I taught a boot camp in Africa. And when I was there, um, my instructors wanted to walk. And if you live in South Africa, everyone will tell you, don't fucking walk anywhere, like ever. But my instructors wanted to walk, it was three blocks. So like, we should walk. And I was like, okay, but, <clears throat> but you're not walking without me. And everyone, all the locals were like, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. We're like, it's fine, it's three blocks. And I was like, I've lived here, I'll be fine. And we walked, literally within a block, a guy came up to me with a knife oh, and literally was like, hey man, could, you know, do you have any money you can lend me? It's always like, can I borrow it? They always like, can I borrow it? I'm like, what's your phone number? Like, can I <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, you know, you know, can I borrow some money? And I was like, dude, like, you know, I've got no money for you. And then he calls a knife out and he's like, don't make me use crime on you. Which I think is the best <laughs> phrase ever. <laughs> like, just, like, I have crime in my hand. <laughs> this is crime. You know, like, and, and so, so you've got this situation. And, and I got out of it because I said to the guy, I was like, that's fucking typical, man. Like really fucking help so you get aggressive very fast. So because aggression normally escalates slowly, it's like most people get fearful and go, hey, no, whatever, hey, just back up. You know, I like going straight from like one to eight. So you instantly get aggressive. I'm like, fuck dude, really? Like the fuck? Like, oh, this is typical. You know what? First of all, I fucking they lose my luggage on the plane. You hear that? They lose my fucking luggage. I've lost my laptop, I've lost my work. Who the fuck's gonna pay me my wages now, huh? Can't fucking access my bank. How am I gonna train that shit? You know what else? They got my fucking wallet in my bag, and I've lost that as well. So I've got no fucking money to give the guy that's trying to fucking take my wallet. Fucking take whatever you want, you cunt. And watch him. At that point, they're like, shit. If I fight this guy, he's got nothing, and he's really angry. So my gain is zero, but my potential loss is now up here. And the, literally the guy's like, man, you should just relax. Like, you're really stressed out. And I was like, what the fuck would you do? And he goes, no, no, like, really relax, man. And so then he was like, he just walked off. But, because I've lived there, I know. It's not that bad. I, yeah, because he just, he wants money to feed his family. Right. He's not, he's not just like, I'm a dick that wants to go and stab someone and take their shit. He's not like, I'm going to go buy some drugs. He's like, there is no money for my family. This is a tourist. Every dollar in his wallet is worth 10 of my local currency. You know, if I get, a, if this guy, if he, if he just happens to have a thousand dollars on him, that's my money for six months. Like, I'm good. And all I have to do is threaten him with a knife. And if I see he's got money, I can stab him because loss of life in Africa is so minimal. He's got no fear of getting arrested because they live in townships, not cities. And in the township, the police won't go there. So, 
like, you ain't getting him. So it's literally like, I stabbed this one guy, I come home, my family can leave for six months. So you've just got to convince him that A, you really don't have any money, and B, it's going to be a fight. And he'll just do the calculation and just be like, yeah, fuck that guy. He's going to find some other guy to pick on. Um, and so, you know, you've got to, but then you've got to be willing to back it up. Like, so I was getting in his face, I was like physically, like, be, he's got a knife and I'm physically pushing him and like, you know, proving I'm willing to, to have a fight. Which is really stupid, by the way, just so everybody is aware. Um, and I most definitely have got into situations before that, you know, you end up fighting. Like, which isn't good, but, but point being, I know in LA, I probably should keep that stranger anxiety to some extent. Because it will just prevent a lot of that stuff happening. Right, right. Anyway, that's my funny story. Um, any other questions? Um, yes? I have a question. Um, it might be a dumb question. But There's no uh, such thing as a dumb question, because um, this will help you. I talk to a lot of people every day. Good. You know what I do? Like, I can talk to anybody. I can approach to any people and you know, go about conversation about what I do. Not a problem. When it, talk, when it comes to talking to a beautiful woman, I can talk to a beautiful woman. Like, nothing. Okay. But I have a problem to um, go to the next level where I want something with her. And then uh, it comes across weird. Okay. And that kills me. Like, you know, like I can talk to them, but, uh, or like I don't, like I can't believe, or like I don't believe I can, I can have that woman. So when I say whatever I want, it comes across weird. So, the reason you don't believe it is because it's never happened. That's a totally acceptable reason to not believe it. So we're gonna go with the fact you don't believe it because it's not happening. That's okay. So forget believing it. You're not gonna believe it. So don't worry about that. Next, when you say you come across weird, what do you say? Well, like, like I wanna say all kinds of things that I really have in my mind that I want with the girl, okay. but when you know, we go about all the, all the conversation, but when it, I guess it's bad timing. When I, when I do say... Well, what do you want to say? Say the things you want to say. Tell well, me like, I just want to go out with them and, you know, ah. and, and uh, you know, just have, like, a relationship with them or okay. whatever. You right. Know. right, so you see here straight away, I want to go out with them. I want to have a relationship with them. Selfish, selfish, selfish. What does she want? So that's the thing that guys get wrong. You're just saying what you want, and she's like, well, why do I have to give that to you? If you think of this like an exchange... What is she getting out of that? Nothing. Now the problem is guys then try and bribe. They're like, well, I have money, or I, I would give you money. Well, she can get money. What she wants is something else. What she wants is humor. What she wants is a guy who's a leader. What she wants is a guy who cares about her feelings for the day. What she wants is a guy who's spontaneous, who's sexual. That's what we're talking about, like that other skill, right? Someone who's, who gets her to do things that she doesn't normally do. If you really want to have a relationship with, like I get guys with the same thing. I say to a girl, like, I want to go and date you, and they don't say yes. No girl says yes to a date. If you go up to a girl and go, would you want to go on a date? Very few women are going to be like, yes, date is good. I like date. <laughs> it's so much better if you said to a girl, hey, when was the last time you walked along the beach in Santa Monica at, um, at sundown? When was the last time you did that? And the girl will think about it, and I'm going to argue that most girls haven't done it. Like, like, not for a long time, right? A long time. Yeah. So, so you say to him instead, so when she says, like, not for a long time, you go, when are you free? When are you free next? Why? Because we're going to go walk along the beach at sundown. And then if she says to you, why? You go, because we haven't done it for a long time. I haven't done it, you haven't done it. Let's do it together. And then she's like, I mean, I don't know, that's kind of weird. Why? Because walking is weird. We're walking right now. What's weird about this? And she goes, I don't know, like, because, like, and you can go, it's not a date. See, you, it's not a date. I'm not trying to have sex with you. I'm just trying to walk on a beach. I haven't done it for a long time. You're beautiful. You're fun. Let's go tomorrow. Let's go now. Let's go. When are you free? That. Right? That. That's how you do it. Think. What does she want? What do I want? And then if she says no, you can go, you know what, you're lost. I'm going anyway. Like, I'm going to do this because I've just realized I haven't done it for a long time. You should come. That's how you do it. That's how you say something. That she when you say, I want to date you, I want to sex you, I want to relationship you, you know, she's like, why? Why is that a thing? If somebody said to me, how do you get in a relationship with a girl? I said to him, it's really easy. Hang out with them every single day and do something different every single day. You're in a relationship with them. Well, how do I know when? You are. That's it. When every single day she's hanging out with you, she's canceling other plans, she's canceling things to hang out with you, when you're doing that every single day together, 
you're in a relationship. And then people go, well, how do I know I'm in the friend zone? Well, you know you're in the friend zone. If you keep being spontaneous, you keep caring about her feelings, and you keep telling her how beautiful she is, and you keep being sexual towards her, you're in a that, that what You won't get in the friend zone. No way. A guy who cares about what she wants, is funny, is spontaneous, is a leader, does his own shit, makes his own money, and is very comfortable making it clear that he thinks she's beautiful and is sexual towards her, man, you got that. You got that in the bag every time. And if she's not, if you don't have that one girl, congratulations, you just met a real bitch. Fuck that girl and find somebody else. You know what I mean? Like, like that's not the right one. Because there are, right now at that point, when you are that guy and you've got like those six things, you are so far ahead of everyone else that you have women chasing you, trying to lock that guy down. So yeah, you're right. The things that you want to say, they come out wrong because they're the fucking things to say. Do you remember what I said? It's about removing the bad stuff. I'm not saying, I'm not saying every girl you meet, you should say, let's go to the beach. Just pull out all the selfish stuff. Stop saying what you want. Stop thinking, what does she want? And then suggesting that you want it too, and then go in and do it. But only suggest stuff you really want. If the idea of walking on a beach with a beautiful girl is your idea of hell, don't suggest it. Yeah? yeah? And if you're looking for inspiration, just watch any romantic movie. They are packed with the inspiration of everything the girls want. Like everything. Twilight? <laughs> romantic movie. <laughs> no, no girls like Twilight. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Rom romantic movie, yeah? So, and you'll find inspiration. But most girls, when, when I say about being spontaneous, most girls want a movie moment. Is it? That's yeah. true. The, the movie moment. Like, that's what, that's what they want. So, you're trying to create that. So, sun setting, walking on a beach hand in hand, you're beautiful. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> that's what you're looking to do. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> that's, that's, the um, that's how sex happens. <laughs> Want to walk on the beach? Okay. Um, <laughs> so, so, you know, so a, big part of, uh, a big part of attraction is creating those movie moments, is, is making that happen. And so you just look at the film and just think, okay, what's cool? Like, um, you know, you could go to, for example, I've, I've always thought the bridge in the grove is really beautiful, and I think people don't really, don't really take the time to notice how beautiful it is, the water fountain. I think if you go to the grove at night, and you stand, I'll show you next time, and you stand on that bridge, I think that's a really romantic moment. You've got the trees over you, they've got the waterfall next to you, the lights shining around. I think that'd be a really cute place to stop, look at the girl, and say, you are beautiful. This is what PUAs miss, right? Mm -hmm. PUAs are like, yeah, so I made up this chick in the back of my car, right? And I'm always like, wow, dude, you are, you understand it. You got it. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, I'm like, dude, you are so lost in the world. You know, like, like I, I've literally, I've got to the point in my life where it's not, it wouldn't be strange for me to, like, I've got, I know some, some people have seen the video now, but like, I've got video footage of me like having sex with four girls. Like, um, and that's something that I've done like on, on a couple of occasions now. Like, there's, there's things that I have done that I, not only do I not care about my own game anymore, because I don't, I don't doubt that I have it, I know I have it, I don't even need to get into a discussion about it, like I don't need to explain it to anyone, I am far too busy enjoying it myself. All I care about now is my job, and my job is help other people to get what they want and earn money from it. That is literally it, like that, that is now like what I care about a lot more. Um, and at that point, it's all about what, how can I help the student? Like, how can I, how can I pinpoint that? And when a student tells me, you know, yeah, I made out this chick in the back of a car, I'm like, all oh, that needs fixing, bro. Like, that's not good for you. That's not good for the guy. I got in an argument with a dude on YouTube the other day because, like, he was literally like, um, he's like, yeah, I just force girls to make out with me. And then, like, and I was like, man, forcing someone isn't good. He goes, no, but, like, if you grab a girl and you pull her in, you'll get a make out at least. And I was like, yeah, but that's a make out you don't want. Did I not tell you this story? He would have flipped. And I was like, that's a make out you don't want. He goes, yeah, but with your method, where you don't grab the girl and force her, you don't even get the make out. And I'm like, well, I would, but not with that girl in that way. Like, but that girl's gonna sue you one day, or go to a therapist, or talk to her boyfriend about that time when she was kiss raped in a car. <laughs> Every girl I've hung out with is like, Adam's great, and I really enjoy him, and I get invited to their weddings with other guys, and I had great sex with them, and I'm still having great sex. You know, like, in my life, I get to look at myself in the mirror and say, wow, <clears throat> you're not a bad guy. You're a cool guy, and women like hanging out with you, and they want to have sex with you. You are forcing women to have sex with you because they don't want to do it themselves. You know? And that's what you should be focusing on. That's where you guys should be. It should be a very, like, people call it seduction. 
And then they go straight up to a girl and they go direct. Hey, you see, I want to sleep with this little seduction. You can seduce that girl. Seduction. It's, it's beautiful. You know, when it's done right. And, it, and then they, go, they call it seduction. They memorize the sequence of lines. No. Seduction is presenting this thing that looks so great for the girls like that. I want that. Do that. That, 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 that. I want to be with you because you present this offer that is just so out of this world. And that's what you should all be doing. And, but the trick is to find where your women are, where you've got to go, where it'll be really easy for you. you know? And that, that's what I teach now, and that's what I'm looking for. And so that's, you know, that's this, this boot camp that's coming up. It's coming up this weekend. I'm telling you guys right now, um, I, I love being completely honest. I have currently sold like two VIP tickets to it. That's it. So there are currently just two people coming to it. I love like, I know guys that try and sell them, they're like, like, get tickets now while they last. Well, you know, the truth is, there are only 10 spots left because I only want 12 guys. I don't really want to work more than that. Um, and, and the two VIP spots have gone already, so you can't really have those anyway. Um, but I'm not pushing it because at the moment I've got my film company, I've got a bunch of other things going on. I don't know if I'm going to teach boot camps ever again. Um, and this was a test to me. If I did it and I had like, if it sold out instantly, then sure, I'd keep teaching boot camps. But I'm at a point now where they're not selling that great. Um, and I don't, I don't care. Like I, I, I do phone coaching, I have private clients, I have DVDs, I have other stuff that I'm selling. So you know everyone's like, this could be my last ever boot camp. Truly, this could be my last ever boot camp. Because if I don't fill it up, I just I have no need to keep doing them. You know, like I just won't. So if you if you want to do this, if you want to learn the stuff I'm talking about, like this will be it. Like this is the chance to do it. Um, so I mean, come to down, come sit down, and talk about it, um, find out. Who knows? I mean, if it sells out, then sure I'll do another one. But you, the go, the guys that turn up, you'll know whether it did or it didn't, um, because it just doesn't make sense to do it if we don't get a whole bunch of people. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, yeah, I did come here to sort of get better at picking up girls, but. Uh... As odd as it sounds, I think I maybe came to pick up some guys too. If uh, any, do any of you guys do any way to daytime game at all, or is it okay to exchange numbers or to do that? Not my thing. That would be these guys. Okay. Yeah, I'm not yeah sure. go ahead and network. I mean, after he's done talking. Oh, is that it? Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, so you know, I'm I'm gonna go to the Oldie King's head. Like you guys are all totally invited. Do me a favor though, just so I know how many people. Like come up to me at the very end and just be like, hey, don't be like I'm thinking. It. Just be like, yeah, I want to come. Um, that way I know, and we'll get a big table and we'll have everyone there and go and. Drink some beers and have some food and sit and chat and talk game. Um, and again, like I said, no pressure. Just if you want to come, come and just talk. Um, take it from there. Thank you ever so much for coming along. I appreciate it. Thank you. Also, guys, for the raffle drawing, <laughs> and these are really corny. I wrote these in my hand, so uh, take one little paper out there. Um, I mean, hey, just so you guys know, like what you're what you're drawing, um, because I um, I have a I have a new I have a new product I've just made. Uh, my products are doing great. That's why I don't really care about it in the bootcamp. Um, I have this new product. You guys never have heard of it. Again, it's just because it's not been released. But I uploaded a version of it onto YouTube. So there's a link on YouTube, but it's a it's a private link. So you can't you can't share it. Um, whoever wins the raffle, I'm going to give you a link to this video. Um, the video comes about because, here's where it came from, right? I made a video called How to Pick Up a Chick on Tinder. You guys seen that video? Yeah. <laughs> it got a lot of views, so. right? It's a pretty good video, right? So Hot or Not contacted me. And they said, do a How to Pick Up a Girl on Hot or Not video. And I was like, sure, that's a piece of cake. And like, Brooke will tell you, this is God's honest truth. I, I'm going to tell you the real truth. I sat down, and I was like, this is going to be easy. I'm just going to pick up some chick on Hot or Not. I'm going to video it, and I'm going to go, this is how to do it. And I couldn't pick up anyone. And I got really annoyed. And I was like, why the fuck doesn't this work? So I started like really like fucking trying to get a girl to like agree to meet me. And none of them were great. None. Like they wouldn't even fucking match. So I would sit there like this. <laughs> and like, and like she's laughing. So I've got, I've literally got like my two girlfriends like next to me. And they're like making out. And they're like, hey, just come and make out. I'm like, no, I'm fucking. <laughs> if I have a chance for ugly bitch now, she wouldn't even say fucking yeah. Like this is literally what was happening. I was like, this is fucking bullshit. So for four days, all I did was fucking Tinder and Hot or Not, like trying to work out the fuck. And on Tinder, I was good. It worked on Tinder. On Hot or Not, fucking nothing. And I was really pissed. And then my, my girlfriend, she got on it. The, like, the other girlfriend, she's like, she's like, I'll get on it, and you can just add me, and then we can fake it. Because I was on a deadline, so I had to make this video. I was like, it doesn't count, but like, fuck it. If I don't meet the deadline, I'm in trouble. I was like, but I got a picture on it. So I was like, fine. So I added her as a friend. And then I was like, I'm not faking this. There is no fucking way on the planet I'm faking this. And I, so for four days, all I did was, anyway, 
What happened was, <laughs> I got really fucking good at it. Like, really good. And I developed this text message. And basically it works like this. I know the picture that you've got to have, and I know the whole fucking profile. So I created the whole profile, and I've got it like down. If I message, if I, if I like someone, I'm probably gonna get a bunch of likes back, right? And I got it down to a point that I just cut and paste one message. And it's like, it's not 100%, but it's like 30%. Girls are like, sure, I'll meet you for a coffee. And it's just cut and paste a fucking text. That's it. Now, you used to be able to do that on online dating, and there was a bunch of products that were like, just cut and paste this message and girls will agree. But you can't do that anymore because OkCupid okay, and Plenty of Fish, they notice if you cut and paste stuff and they stop you doing it. But the online mobile stuff, they've not worked that out yet. So you can cut and paste and send messages to fucking everyone. So I literally, like, I'm pretty sure it was still... I'm pretty sure it's still... <laughs> well, well, Tinder, I, I didn't update it, but I'm pretty sure my Hot or Not app is still working. Um, and I, I haven't looked in for a while, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to attempt to go through it. I'm just going to show you, like... Oh, look, look at this. I've got two matches from goodness knows when the last time I was looking. But I just want to show you how many people eventually... Um, that's loading. That's not the only one. Look at this. Look at this. It's the fucking easiest thing at all. These are all girls that basically said, yes, I'll meet up with you for a coffee. There's a guy called John that I didn't message him. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's how it was. And so anyway, so this video I recorded, which I've not released yet, this new product, and I've not released it yet. So what you are raffle drawing for is I will send you the link to the YouTube video that I sent my tech guy to download and turn into a DVD. Because that was the easiest way of sending stuff via YouTube, which we spoke about earlier. So if you win the raffle, you will get access to this private link. You won't be able to share it because it will be locked to just you. You'll get like a, a password so just you can access it from your computer. But you'll get the link. You're going to need to watch it really quick because that video, the minute the product's finished, we're going to take that video now. So, so when you win this raffle, you have to email Jared, I suppose. It's probably the best right. person with Nate. Email Nate. Then Nate will message me who it is. And I'll send, I'll send the link so you can watch the video. It's 45 minutes long. It's the shit. So that's what you can get. Please don't rip it and share it. That would suck. Um, <laughs> so done. Cool. That's what you get. All right. Did you test it out on Grinder too? No. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> sure. What about? <laughs> you like, oh, you didn't get one. Yeah. Maybe. Just one match. Try it. Yo, Adam, what were the six uh, attractive qualities? I guess. So you know the PEN model, right? Yeah. It's the four guys in the PEN. So it's Sweet. bad boy, leader, provider, nice guy, humor, kindness. It'll be on the video too, so. Cool. All right. Let's see, first number nine. Who's nine? Oh, yeah. Awesome. So message him and we'll. Right. <laughs> What's your name again? Six. Jay. Jay. Okay, cool. Dude, this is like yeah, this. Is, this is good stuff. Like no, like no one's seen it. Like you'll see how many people have watched it. It's like twenty-five people or something have seen it so far. So okay. it's it's very. It, that's, the, that's the cool thing, like, because I used to work for PUA training, and so with PUA training, um, everything I created was theirs. Um, so all my really good stuff, I always kept privately and taught it to my private students. And so now I've got, now I'm free, I've got all this content, and like, no one's seen it. Because I, I basically innovate all the time, I'm always coming out with new stuff, and so this is one of those things. But yeah, and it's always motive, it's always something stupid like that. It's always like, Adam, can you do this? Yeah? Damn it, I can't! Ugh, how do I do this? And then I get good at it, and I'm like, ha, now I can. And that's how, that's how I've always learned game. It's always been, I want to do something and I can't do it anymore, or I can't do it, or I'm not as good at it as I thought I was. And then I like become obsessed until I'm good at it, and then I'm like, oh yeah, that's good. You can do it again. So, you see. So yeah, you'll be, you'll be killer Tinder and, and hot or not. So, there we go. Awesome.